Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 36. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega Series. Now let's get into the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. All right, so we are here for the British Elite Invitational. We've got British cars for this one. Uh, Amalfi Coast, Camino Valle de Montserrat and then New York Circuit. Let's get going. Right, so we're taking the TVR. Cigar is for this one. Um, pretty much the only TVR that I actually think looks semi-respectable. And sounds semi-respectable. Any other car. What's the AI doing? Any other car. Nah. Sod off. Yo, Zeno, what up? Wagwan Yi. Ideal. Oh no, Zeno. Shit, I bollocked me engine. Happy birthday, Zeno! What do you get for your birthday? To life. Little Lando time! Got money instead of presents. Hey, not bad. What are you planning on getting? I'm still looking into getting a fucking Steam Deck, hopefully, for Christmas. Fair enough. Never would I have to lay down. Love this song. The Clincher is called. How high is Mech's camera? Same height. It's just that I've lowered myself down. Because my legs are up. My legs are currently above the position of where my ass is, so that is the definition of putting your feet up. <laughs> Let me tell you, I'm fucking comfy. Oh yeah, tomorrow Rocksmith Plus comes out. Release Rocksmith Plus. Oh. I've been saying I don't want to do it, but I want to do it, but I don't want to do it, but I want to do it. Ah. I might play some normal Rocksmith at some point on stream. Because I like playing the guitar. So. Hog. <laughs> Bruh. Absolute banger, lad. Yeah, this is a banger, I will admit. This playlist is getting better and better every stream. Like, we're, we're getting, like, some absolute Class A tunes. 
And the reason why they're Class A tunes is because they are so good they could be classed as drugs. I'm going to get arrested for how good this playlist is. <laughs> Super massive. I do find this car a bit odd, the fact that the exhausts stick out the sides. Also, Kodo, you need to see a doctor if your ass cheeks are soggy. soggy. I think you've got some weird leakage shit going on. I'm not gonna lie, if we called roadmen cringe men, they'd stop being roadmen and roadmen would never exist. If we just started calling roadmen cringe men, the British roadman would die of extinction. Probably. I've just noticed that this car has a weird vent. where the passenger side is. I thought it was like a black smudge, but it's an, it's an actual vent. There's a hole. That's so strange. Where the fuck would I be a road man? You don't want to be a road man. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, I'm in the wall. Ah yes, Master Puppets, let's go. We're getting some 80 shit in this playlist as well now. What a tune. Some good music going on. Good music. Ah. Ouch. Yeah, so you're a bit of a hypocrite, Cotto. <laughs> hypocrite. So we got a 10% discount on intake manifold and throttle body upgrades. Nice. Master. Master. I don't understand the reasoning why people do start smoking. I understand peer pressure is a thing. But like, smoking is the one that I, I just don't understand because that is something that literally never has done any good. Like alcohol, you can drink a little bit of alcohol and be fine. Obviously, if you're a fucking alcoholic, that's bad. But a drink here and there. So peer pressure when it comes to drinking, okay, fair enough, it's harm free. No, smoke-free does not mean cigarette-free. Smoke-free means smoke-free. Vaping is still classed as smoking. By all means, you don't smoke cigarettes anymore, but you still smoke. You still inhale smoke, so...
I mean, let's be honest, you know, people have been told that social media is bad for you, and it can be bad for you in large quantities. People still do it. Drugs. Drugs. <laughs> They're very bad for you. Majority of the time, people still do it. Um, there's loads of things that people do. Eating obscene amounts of food. And still smoking. Ah, shit. That's not ideal. Get the car moving. Get the car moving. No, it's, it's still class to smoke it. Ah. I mean, technically, this is just, like, probably coolant coming out of my engine. So, technically, this is not smoking. Some vapes don't have nicotine in it, but it doesn't matter. Smoke is still smoking. If you're inhaling a form of smoke, and before you say vapor is just the term for a liquid that's evaporated, but it's still a type of smoke. You get a chemical reaction, you get a gas that comes out, you breathe it in when it comes to e-cigarettes. Same story with um, cigarettes. You burn it off, create a chemical reaction, and you breathe it in. It's the same thing. Smoking is still smoking. If you're breathing in stuff other than oxygen, it's smoking. That's the easiest way to think about it. Obviously, sometimes, like, it's not, but... Yeah, that's why I'm saying sometimes it's not. <laughs> what about nitrogen? No, that goes in your ass. <laughs> All right, so we're here for the Amateur Road Coupe. Uh, we're going to be taking the Ferrari 599 GTB for this one. Road Atlanta, Silverstone, and then Sunset Peninsula. Let's go. That's going to get taken well out of context. Cue the clips. <laughs> oh, look. Finally, a Ferrari. <laughs> oh, I like this Ferrari. Interior is nice as well. The fact that they properly got the um, shift lights on the wheel to work properly when they started only just started doing interior, I think that's pretty cool. Her <laughs> lungs collapse. It's hard to tag. Liver failure, lungs collapse. There's vomit. I swear to. Sounds like the start of an Eminem song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just gotta say it, don't you, Shadow? Just gotta say it. <laughs> down, free down, free down. Cardo, I need to see a screenshot of that to believe you. <laughs> Gotta see that screenshot, man. I don't believe you. <laughs> Once you do S10, that's when shit is tough. No, they're not. They are not that easy. They're a lot harder than they were in GT Sport. A lot harder. They're designed around someone 
if if you play Gran Turismo on the hardest difficulty AI, um, then the licenses are a challenge for you. They're not walk in the park, but you can do them. If you're anything lower, the licenses are near impossible. Which is why I've got such a problem with Gran Turismo, because for a game that's supposed to be a simcade, that's supposed to be accessible and all this, they just make it so that only their best players can actually complete the game. There's a problem with GT4. A lot of the best Gran Turismo 4 players can only complete that game. I can't complete it because I can't do the the final one you need to do before unlocking the endurance event. So I'm stuck in my Gran Turismo 4 playthrough. I can't go further. Yeah, gold should be difficult, a pass should be easy. But the problem is, is there's stuff hidden behind getting a gold. So by all means, when it comes to a leaderboard, the thing is you have leaderboards to compare other people with the events, so when you complete a license, you're comparing everyone else anyways, and you have the incentive to become better, so why not just make the times for a gold be based off of your difficulty level that you've selected? By all means, if you want to be the best at a certain license, you use the leaderboards for that. You use that anyways at, at the moment, so, you know, why not just make it so that getting a gold is when you've done something, you know. I got a Ferrari upgrade and I couldn't even see what it was. Yeah, 1,000 hours in GT Sport is going to give you a huge advantage. The thing is, for me, I with a controller and with how chill I am, it's, it's impossible for me to get gold. I'm not a try-hard that just tries my best at every single moment because I just want a game to have fun. Um... And if I'm trying to complete a game, I want to have fun while completing it. I don't want to feel stressed out or anything. So Gran Turismo 7 is just a non-completable game for me. I'm never going to be able to complete that. So. But, um. Yeah, but I don't have the time to do a thousand hours in GT Sport. Because I'm busy doing falls and stuff. I'm busy playing a lot of newer racing games. So, no, I gave up on the Platinum, Cardo. Just Cause 3 is just fucking ridiculous. You've got to get five stars on every single activity, which some of them are really tough to get. So, if you're looking to Platinum that, you're looking at easily 100 hours plus to Platinum Just Cause 3. Yeah, but to get Platinum, you're going to be looking at 100 plus hours. Yeah, the Platinum for GT Sport is ridiculous. Um, I'm not really going to say Gran Turismo is an ableist thing, because it's... Being ableist is like intentionally doing stuff because you hate people. But they could do a bit more to make it easier, more accessible for a lot more people. Because the way that Gran Turismo 7 is, it's just, it's not possible for someone to gold it. And you know, the, the part of the licenses should be that you can get a gold. It's a video game at the end of the day. It's not an actual, like, test to go actually driving on the road or on an actual racetrack. Because there's no safety involved. There's no nothing. So give us the enjoyment of getting a thingy. So, Need for Speed Heat's going free. Not bad. I'm not going to be playing it on PlayStation because I already own it on PC. 
Thanks to Sinsu for giving me that one. I don't even think it would be fine. I'll be honest. It'd be l better that it's not locked behind a difficulty. Um, if it wasn't locked behind a gold. But I still don't think it would be ideal. Because you can't complete the game still. <laughs> Some people might like it harder. That's what she said. <laughs> Some people do like more of a challenge. I, I don't. I don't like... If, if you were to say, for example, if Motorsport 3 had no difficulty options and I was forced to do it on what was on whatever the game gave me, but I, um, the game basically gave me what was equivalent to expert difficulty and I struggled to get first, I wouldn't be doing this playthrough because I can't sit here, have fun playing this game and enjoying it whilst also streaming, creating content on it, it would be one, too stressful, and two, I wouldn't like it. It's the same with WRC, right? I love the fact that WRC has the slider because I was terrible at WRC, so I would have it on 70, 80% difficulty, um, and I'd quite easily be two or, two or three seconds ahead so I'd feel like ah, I'm, I'm doing good and that was if I didn't crash now if I was on that difficulty I'd be 30 35 seconds ahead so I now play on 110% difficulty because I've gotten practice and I've enjoyed it and I've gotten better I've learned how rally cars properly drive in that game but by all means some people can't get the hang of that like, if I was to give someone 100 hours on WRC, I wouldn't expect them to have that kind of improvement. To be honest, for me to get better, all I had to do was realise I've got to turn into the corner earlier, and I won't crash on the outside. Or I won't have to slow down as much. And once I learned that, it was like plain sailing. I was flying through that. But for some people, it is difficult... And to force a difficulty on you isn't enjoyable. And I know for people who are a lot better, they don't see that problem because they just fly through the game. But people who are a lot worse suffer. To be honest, it is suffering because you can't enjoy the game that you spent money on because it's too difficult. Like, I remember as a kid playing stuff like Sega Rally, right? And I never played Sega Rally because it was so much... It was really difficult on easy mode. Granted, that's a bad example because that game offered difficulty options. But their easiest mode was too difficult for me, so I didn't enjoy it. Now, imagine if that easy mode was the only mode that they offered. That would then mean... Wow, that was basically what it was like for me anyways, because I couldn't go any lower than what it was there. So you got to think, like, Gran Turismo 4, uh, especially Gran Turismo 7 now, it's, it's just a similar experience to that. It's just, oh yeah, I can do some of the stuff, but I can't do the other stuff. Unless I sit down for so many hours that I get bored out of the game anyways. I either get bored b from playing it too much, or bored because I can't do it. To lose, lose. That's why I... Like, I, I don't understand why people review-bombed Gran Turismo 7 when it launched. But I also do understand why they would review-bomb it now. Because there are a lot of problems with that game that they just haven't fixed. By all means, the launch review-bombing was just stupid. But review-bombing it now? Good idea. Alright, here we go. So we are here for the 8-cylinder Supreme GT. Starting off with Camino Vio, Amalfi Coast, and then Circuit to Catalunya. And we're driving the Alfa Romeo 8C for this one. Very excited. Take my life and fade away. I love these pendulum songs. Just take it on. We got the Alfa Romeo. Brum, 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 brum. Brum, brum. 
I love this car. It's awesome. I think Alfa Romeo should make an, another version of the full C. Call it like 2C or something like that. And it's like a newer version of the full C. Or make a 6C. And like have it be between what the 8C was and the 4C. But I think Alfa Romeo should make another sports car. I mean, you think the 4C came came out and was in Need for Speed Most Wanted. They should make another sports car like that. Little, tiny, but powerful. Speaking of uh, Need for Speed, we've got a Need for Speed song. I'm convinced that this was on... It was either Most Wanted or 2010. Hot Pursuit. I'm convinced it was 2012. Sounds like a 2012 song. No, 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 no. Minu, 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 minu. It was definitely in a need for speed. There wouldn't be any way that I would know it. If it wasn't from a Need for Speed. Like, this has a Need for Speed vibe to it. It's not from a Forza. I know it definitely was a video game song. I don't know. Oh, Need for Speed 22. Um, I think it's going to be brilliant. Because it's the same... Some of the developers that are working on that have worked on things like... The old school WRC. Like, the development team that's behind there. Um, Codemasters Cheshire was like a sub. Um, studio. It was basically Evolution Studios. And Codemasters was like, yeah, we'll buy up all your developers. When they shut down Evolution. And then they made Codemasters Cheshire. They made Onrush. So, when people say that Onrush is a really bad game... And that they shouldn't compare it to Motorstorm. It's kind of upsetting because it's the Motorstorm developers that made Onrush. But yeah, basically the people that made Motorstorm and Drive Club and all that, they're going to be working on this new Need for Speed. They have been because they've been merged into Criterion now. That's either a muff on my lights or my lights are playing up. I probably shouldn't be looking in the lights, to be honest. But yeah, I think the new Need for Speed is gonna, gonna be good. Oh no, that's a fucking moth. No, fuck me. Me no likey. Yeah, something's moving up there. Ah, oh, there he goes. Little bastard. Alright, five grand. Not bad. Yeah, so, when it comes to Need for Speed, um, I think it's going to do well and it's going to be a fun game. Obviously, we have to play the game to be 100% sure. I'm still going to be trialing it, but I I have high hopes. Codemaster Cheshire has made enjoyable games. They made fucking Motorstorm. They've made uh, the original WRC games for the PS2. They've made Drive Club. Like, genuinely, developers that worked on Drive Club are working on this new Need for Speed. People were raving about the new... Uh, what's it called? about Drive Club saying how it's the best game in the world. So many people are like, oh my god, Drive Club's so amazing, which I don't think is that amazing. I think it's a good racing game, but I don't think it deserves the hype that it all has. It's still good, but like people saying, oh, Drive Club's the best game in the world. No, it isn't. It doesn't even run at 60 FPS. If there's no option for a game to run at 60 FPS, from like 2010 onwards, then it's it's not a good game. Sorry. 
Go cry about it, bitch. <laughs> no, but... When people do... The thing is, the people that are complaining that the new Need for Speed is going to be terrible because Criterion's back on it are the exact same people that rave about Drive Club being the best game. And I'm just like, you are the biggest idiot with zero brain cells that I have ever seen. Because the same people are working... Obviously, it's not all the same people. Yeah, I mean... Even then, a, a racing game should not run at 30 frames a second in modern day. Even the WRC games, I don't think, should be running at 30 frames a second on an X Xbox One or a uh, PS4. Granted, they now have 60 FPS options for the next-gen consoles, but I don't think WRC should be running at 30 FPS. No racing game should run at that low of a frame rate. But even then, stuff like Drive Club, it is a good, sort of alright looking game. It's, it's not the most beautiful game ever. That's just wrong on so many levels. But it is a good looking game. I don't see why this new Need for Speed is going to fail at all. The only problem that I see is the fact that EA likes to make a game and not support it after it's made. I mean, we're starting to see that with Grid Legends. Grid Legends has only released one DLC so far, and it's been fairly lacking. Uh, and I think that is EA's fault. And that's the only th downside, but as long as the core game is good, I don't care. I would like extra content, but if it doesn't have extra content and the core game's good, fucking great. You know. Oh, whoa. Uh, oh, whoa. Uh. So, one thing as well I want to bring up. So, the new WR... Dirt Rally has basically been cancelled. Because they're going to make the Dirt franchise as an arcade game. Same as it has been. So, the next Dirt 6 is just going to be an off-road racing game where you just piss about with dirt cars. But the next Dirt Rally, what is Dirt Rally 3.0? Dirt Rally's basically being translated into uh, WRC. So they're going to use the same Dirt Rally engine, but they've just made it WRC. And they're going to have a yearly game come out every year. I can't see a reason why it wouldn't be yearly, because, you know, having a game every season just makes sense if they have the license for it. So, I think that we're basically just going to get a yearly version of Dirt Rally. It's going to be called um, EA Sports WRC. That's what the game's going to be called. Same as how F1 has rebranded now to EA Sports F122. That's the next F1 game is going to be EA Sports F123, EA Sports F124, etc, etc. And that's going to happen with the WRC games. It's going to be called EA Sports WRC 23. And that's going to come around next year. I've got high hopes for it. I can't see why they wouldn't implement the VR mode. Because VR was so successful in uh, Dirt Rally 1 and Dirt Rally 2. For them to not add it to the WRC games would be stupid. So that's why I'm excited for that. Because finally, like you know, being able to take part in a WRC competition in VR. That, that gets me excited. And I mean, Codemasters, they know... The only thing I'm concerned about Codemasters taking over the WRC license is in the WRC games by KT Racing, specifically. Um, the actual stages that KT Racing have designed are unbelievable. Like, KT Racing makes some of the best stages in the WRC franchise. 
I think that if if it wasn't for the fact that the stages were so good in WRC, I don't think it'd be as su successful as Dirt Rally. But the stages are just that good that you can't say no to them. They are so well designed. Codemasters, on the other hand, if you look at Dirt Rally 2.0, their stages are pretty dire. They're not very exciting. Nice. So yeah, I'm hoping that the next WRC game, WRC 23, is going to be pretty fun. Right, we've got six more events to do. Let's get on with it. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.